Hi, it's Jack Riccardi, and today's the day of the Miami indictments for Donald Trump, which we'll talk about on the show starting at 4 on KTSA. You know, I go back to when Hillary Clinton was uh, found to have the um, insecure email server, the private server, the 33,000 missing emails, bleach bidding, smashing phones, and the FBI took a look at that in the summer of 2016 and shrugged their shoulders. This same national security state is now making the argument that the uh, papers that Trump hoarded at Mar-a-Lago are about national security. I just don't buy it. I don't think most people do. Um, Hillary Clinton undoubtedly endangered the national security of this country. Trump almost certainly did not. It was stupid to hoard those things. It was probably illegal to hoard those things. And he certainly gave his opponents the stick with which to beat him. But it is very hard to take seriously the pursuit of him versus the shrugging off of Hillary Clinton. Look, this comes down to you and me, because we're the jury that's going to render a verdict before an actual jury in a courtroom does on these federal charges. And we're going to look at whether or not what we have heard and what we believe about what we've heard disqualifies uh, Donald Trump from the presidency. I am not convinced that it does. If it came down to Trump versus Biden, I'd vote for Trump. Having said that, I am looking for the most conservative candidate who can win who can be effective once they become president. And based on his track record, I don't think Trump is that guy. He had four years, and three of those years, he was at the peak of his power, the, the, the prime of his life. He had everything going his way in terms of slaying the dragon and draining the swamp. And not only did he not do it, but by his own admission, and he said this repeatedly, he surrounded himself with disloyal or inappropriate people. Then... In the fourth year of his presidency, along comes COVID, and he hands the country over to Dr. Anthony Fauci. So I, I get the angst, and I get the sense that uh, he has been mistreated, but I have to vote for my country's future, not Donald Trump's past. My vote is not about adjudicating the fairness or unfairness of what happened to him, but where we go from here. And when you think about the stuff we talk about, about on this show every day, you realize we don't have a lot of time to play with. And our opponents are making very rapid progress. They are extremely bold. They are wasting no time. And by the way, they're not hung up on personalities. It's all about ideology and culture war to the modern left. So do we hand the country over to Biden or risk handing it over to somebody who would have eight years as his successor versus finding the most conservative candidate who can win, which is what I'm looking for. I want to say something quickly about people, and they call our show every day, who say they are going to vote for Trump because he was treated unfairly, either because he's been persecuted or because he was robbed of the election in 2020 or whatever it is that you believe. And he's your hero, and I understand that, and I respect that. But I have to think that a lot of heroes... A lot of people who make a good faith effort to do something and render service to their country often do not get what they deserve. If every single person who has ever served our country insisted that they would only do so if they got the treatment, the gratitude that they deserve, we would have a very different history. I appreciate what Donald Trump did. I appreciate the time he put in. I think it is time to move on to somebody else, and we're going to talk about that and many other things today, starting at 4 on 550 and 1071 KTSA. You can also find our show as an on-demand podcast. Anywhere you get your other podcasts, just look for The Jack Riccardi Show.